hope you try to understand a little bit better today is this is scary stuff. You know, we're entering a, a period in time uh, where there is a lot of uncertainty. What can or should we do differently, if anything, to make sure that that doesn't hurt us and in fact, instead helps us, all right? So let's start here. Let's talk a little bit about kind of where we're at at this point with the, the economy and the market. And the reality is, we may or may not be in a recession, right? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. GDP officially went down two quarters in a row, at least you know before they've revised those numbers. There is some speculation that when they revise them a few months later, they may actually not have gone down. But for now, that is true, right? Um, however, employment is really high, right? Unemployment's really low. I mean, there's so there's a lot of mixed signals going on right now, right? So that part of it is a little bit unknown, right? Is the is the overall economy in a real recession? Are there just some indicators, but they're not all there? It's a weird time in human history, uh, especially economically. However, there are two things that you need to make a note of, right? Recently, and it has bounced just a little bit, but economic outlook which is a survey measure, right? It's basically, hey, do you think the, the future economy is gonna be better than it is today or worse than it is today? That number is, was at a record low recently. So the, the highest number of people ever believe that the economy was heading in the wrong direction, right? And a lot of what causes recessions and a lot of the economic impact of recessions comes from how people feel, how they think, right? What is it they think is happening and is that changing their spending behavior, right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. So regardless of what the overall economy does, it is pretty safe to say that right now, the average person is feeling economically uncertain and that has a lot of effects, right? The other thing we can say definitively though, is that the real estate industry is definitely in a recession, okay? Now that is, again, we don't know what's gonna happen in the next couple of years. I'm not here to predict that, but the amount of homes being sold during a given month is down compared to where it was last year. Now that means it's basically back to, in a lot of markets, more of a normal market, right? Because we had such a crazy real estate market for a few years there, but that's certainly a drop off and that's gonna have a substantial effect on your income, right? It's gonna have a substantial effect on how many agents are able to be successful in this industry. And so regardless of what the overall economy is doing, sentiment has been really low and that's something that does affect all of us. And more importantly speaking, when it comes to this specific industry, I think it's pretty confident. We can say pretty confidently, we are in a recessionary phase at this point, right? Not good news, but hey, we need to be honest with ourselves about what's going on, right? So what do we do here? Let's start to talk about how do we handle this situation. And I think what we have to really understand is that you have to empathize with how people are feeling, right? Now, we are talking business. It's very easy in the business world to want to talk about facts and, you know, hard realities, right? You know, strategy, things like that. We don't often talk about emotion as business owners. And, and, you know, that's probably not a good thing. We should probably be more open and honest about emotion. But when it comes to marketing, emotion is the most important thing, right? We as humans make decisions based on emotion and we justify those decisions with logic, right? So especially in a period of time, if you think about maybe for the past 10 years or maybe for a period of time after the Great Recession, everybody was feeling more and more positive, right? Things are going the right direction. They got the job they were looking for. They were making good income all that kind of stuff. Well, regardless of where they're st statistically they are at this point, they're starting to feel differently, all right? And so in a lot of ways, that is what you have to understand. You have to understand that regardless of what exactly happens here in the next six to 12 months, a lot of people are feeling more scared. They're feeling more uncertain. And are there things we can do to help them understand that we're here to number one, empathize with them, to understand what they're going through, to say we're there to support them. And number two, is there anything we can do to help them with those things that are intimidating or scary, right? And if we can do that, there's a good chance we're gonna to start to get more attention from more of the right people, right? So let's talk about this for just a second in terms of the stats and the statistics sort of sort of side of it, right? Which is, let's talk about some, some basic realities that we know are going to happen during this period. And they've already started to happen, right? So regardless of if it becomes an official recession or not, these things are already starting to shift, right? Number one is that there will be people who leave the industry, okay? You may already know some of them. I personally do. I know several agents who have retired here in the past 12 months, um, and I know several that are talking about leaving at this point in time, right? 
some of that's normal. Some people are just going to retire. They're going to age out. They're going to decide, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. I got another you know, other career opportunity, whatever it is. But more are going to leave the industry than join it over the next 12 months, right? I mean, that again, that's a prediction. I don't know 100% for sure, but it's pretty safe to say because in all the past recessions, you've seen the number of total real estate agents, especially in the United States, decrease, right? Real estate tends to attract a lot of people when the market's hot, right? Because people look at it, they go, oh, wow, that's easy. Wow. My friend just helped somebody sell a house. They made $20,000 in commission. It was a piece of cake. I want to jump in, right? Now, we all know how, how uh, sort of foolish that might be for a lot of those folks, but that kind of stuff tends not to happen during a recession, right? Because if they're talking about home sales being down and real estate agents quitting in droves or whatever, I mean, those are scary things. It's not going to attract as many people. So, Regardless of how truthful those statements are, how lucrative the job can be, you will see some competition leave the market, right? What does that mean? It means a couple of things. Number one, it means there's less noise. And this is a huge opportunity for you, right? This is, this is the primary reason I always tell people, look, the best time to increase your marketing, to get more aggressive, to do more is during a recession, right? Uh, in some ways, and I don't want this to sound, you know, to sort of too negative, but, but I've been kind of waiting for the next recession because it completely reshuffles a lot of different things, right? People get scared, they get uncertain, and some people leave these industries. So on the one hand, you've got less competitors to make that noise in the first place. But on the other hand, a lot of your competition is scared. They don't know what to say, right? It's not as easy to say, hey, let me help you buy or sell a house when you know some of the people you're communicating with just lost their job, right? So you have to change your messaging. So the noise level drop substantially. So what that means is that there's a lot of additional opportunity to get in front of people if you're saying the right things, right? If you're empathizing, if you're being there for them, we'll give you some ideas on that here in just a few minutes, right? It also means that all of those spheres of influence, all those people who are loyal to those agents that decide to make a career change at this point in time are now available to you. And they are going to be looking for an agent that they can trust, right? So the market share is going to become available in a way that it never does in any other points in time, right? Every single time a new agent joins, they bring a few people sort of in with them, the people they know best, and those people get peeled out of other agents' spheres of influence, right? This is one of the few times that we're going to see the opposite happen, where spheres are going to completely collapse. It's not like those people are, are dead necessarily, right? It's just that they're not an agent anymore. So all of those people are going to be looking for an agent they can start to know, like, and trust huge opportunity to get in front of them. So keep that in mind, right? This is one of the only times that you get that kind of complete opening across a whole bunch of people all at once, right? Agents leave and come at a rate, you know, on a sort of standard level, but during a recession, a bunch of opportunities emerge all at one time, right? So the agents that are positioned to capture that attention are going to automatically grow their market share as a result, right? Um, we've already talked about the second one, but the part I want to emphasize here is ads, actually get cheaper during recessions. We are getting opt-ins in our ads for, for less than we ever have before right now, right? Now, we're not exactly real estate, so it's, it's not quite a perfect analogy, but you will see this, that you should start to see advertising decreasing in price. Now, that does not mean that leads are cheaper. That's an important distinction here. Just because the ads are cheaper doesn't mean that getting someone to opt in to talk to you is gonna cost less. In fact, it may cost more because they're not as eager to do that right now, right? Again, recession changes human behavior. But the thing that is cheaper for sure is the impression. And that's the part, you gotta think a little bit higher level to understand this stuff sometimes. But if you can get an ad in front of someone, one exposure, so an impression is that your ad was shown to a single person one time, right? That particular metric gets more affordable. The price goes down during recessions. In fact, you know, Facebook's revenue even dropped last quarter, right? So that's because they're getting less spend on ads. So we should see these prices come down. Where is the impression so valuable? The impression is really valuable when it comes to branding, right? So again, this is the market share thing. All those people from all those spheres that now don't have a trusted agent anymore, they're going to be looking, they're going to be seeking, they're not even maybe not even consciously, but they're going to be paying more attention to ads they see from other real estate agents than they used to, right? And so what that means is that if you can get yourself in front of those people, if you can use those affordable impressions to gain more market share, to gain, maybe I should be using 
using the term mind share, right? You're going to get into their brain. You're going to start to help them understand that you're the local real estate expert that they should trust. When the market comes back, all of a sudden, two, three, four times more people know, like, and trust you than they used to. And they're going to come flooding to you in droves, right? So not only can you use the cheaper ads to maybe maintain or grow a little bit during the recession, but the awareness you build should allow you to explode coming out of it, right? And then the other thing to remember here is that there might be fewer transactions, right? But there's also less agents and people are always going to want to learn more about these sorts of things, right? Real estate is for almost everyone, the largest transaction they'll ever be a part of. It's the most money they're ever gonna spend, right? They are curious about it. They're gonna continue to wanna keep learning. What happens is because a lot of people are not necessarily out there talking about buying houses right now, because you know they're just sort of pulling back on that area, you're, you're gonna see a lot of agents that are reluctant to be as educational because they don't think people are thinking about this stuff as much. Well, they're thinking about it just as much. They're also thinking, I just don't know that I feel comfortable pulling the trigger right now, right? So if you continue to educate, you're going to, again, establish yourself in their minds as the local go-to expert, and you're going to pull more of that market share, right? So in a lot of ways, if you sort of sum up everything you see here, it's just move in the, the opposite direction your competition does. So as you see people pulling back, as you see people getting scared, get more aggressive, and you're going to capture more of the market as a result, right? So let's talk about how video plays into all this, because this is something that's really important to understand, but it's also one of the harder aspects of video to understand, right? And that is the fact that there is not a single tool. In fact, I would sort of argue that even, even when you get together in person, you can't necessarily accomplish what you can with video. There's nothing out there that allows you to build relationships and show empathy, share in the emotional experience with your viewer than video. There's nothing out there like it in terms of scale, right? I can make a video about something. I can show it to a few people, a single person, hundreds, thousands, millions. It does not change how much work I put in, right? The only thing that changes is how many people see that content and consume it. So what's really amazing here, that this is, this is nuts. They did a study at one point they, right, scientists at some university did a study, and this actually gets misquoted all the time. So if you ever heard the idea that people retain 95% of a video versus 10% of the information and in when they read it, that is actually incorrect. The actual statistic is that they retain 95% of the emotional information when they watch a video versus 10% when they read text, right? And if you say it that way, it probably starts to make more sense. Well, yeah, of course, when I watch a video of somebody, I can I can tell pretty carefully or pretty clearly how they feel, right? When I read a text version of the same thing, it's a lot harder to understand that emotion, right? This is the key. This is why video is so powerful, right? Is that when it comes to building a relationship, like do you become friends with somebody because they just say a lot of cool statistics to you all the time? Like maybe if you really love stats, right? But no, you, you become friends with people because you get to like them, right? You see them and they make you laugh and you have fun and you, they make you feel good, right? And I know as, as a culture, we're maybe not great about talking about our feelings, but that's the truth, right? We wanna spend more time with people who make us feel good. It's that simple, right? That is all emotion, not statistics. It's not facts. It's not, you know, the, the basics of communication. It's this higher level thing. And video does this in a way that other forms of communication can't, right? So here's what you got to start thinking about is what are your competitors doing? Are your competitors putting themselves on camera and putting that in front of their, their audience, their sphere of influence? Would you even know if they were, right? Do you see everything your competition does? Do, could they have an email list where they're emailing videos out to their customers? Could they be sending text messages with those videos, right? Could they be sending Facebook messages to people with links to video messages? There's just so many different places to use this. I, I will get to a couple examples here in just a minute, but what you have to ask yourself is who's building relationships with the most people, right? Who's building the deepest relationships with the most people? And can you use video to get yourself into deeper, better, stronger, more often relationships, right? More relationships than your competitors, right? We're gonna be in a race at this point. And a lot of what it comes down to is not just getting your message out there, but getting a message out there where the person who consumes that message feels like they're bonding with you, right? They're getting to know you, they're forming that connection. And during a recession, emotions tend to be high. 
right? We, we saw the uncertainty. We saw how uncomfortable people are right now. During a recession, it's the best possible time to be able to communicate emotion effectively, right? Because you're going to be seen as empathetic, as a supporter, as a person who understands what they're going through versus everybody else that comes across as all business, as being very cold because they're using some form of communication, especially text, email, uh, text messages, posts on social media without a video. That's all text does not transmit emotions very well. Now, I'll give you a side note. If you want to make text, you know, emails, texting, social posts that do contain more and share more emotion, use emojis, right? That's why I invented emojis because faces are really good at showing emotion. Hence why videos are so powerful, right? So we made all these little pictures of faces you can stick into your text, which helps communicate the emotion that much better, right? Still does not compare to video, but it does get it there a little bit closer, all right? So let's talk about what do you talk about, right? What kind of contents are you going to create? What, what is the shift? How do we adjust what we're doing here? And I think this is the most important thing you can remember, right? Which is that during a recession, people transition from talking about where they're spending money to where they're saving money, right? You, you might still be doing well during a recession. There's plenty of people who make tons of money during a recession, right? Because it's only a slight adjustment in, in the growth rate of the GDP. But there are some people who are doing really poorly, right? That are having a hard time. So what, me, what that means is that if I'm thinking about buying a new car, I'm not going to bring that up. I'm not going to, it's not going to be the first thing I want to chat about with my friends because they may have just lost their job, right? So I got to be careful there, right? But what I will be more likely to talk about is where I found a savvy way to save money. That's the hot button topic during a recession, right? Well, we're cutting back a little, we're pulling the, 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 the drawstrings on the purse a little bit more. Um, so here's what we're doing. You know, we actually decided uh, we we went and we did some research on the streaming bundles, and we realized that if you do the family plan, you can share it with other family members in other places. But per person, it's a lot cheaper. So now everybody's saving ten bucks a month on their streaming, and we're sharing it with my my brother and my my uh, sister in law or something, right? That that's a that's a distinctive shift that happens during recession. So what you have to start thinking about is can you adjust your messaging to fit that? Right. So a lot of time, a lot of right now, a lot of agents out there are basically saying, you know, things like, oh, the recession, the, the rates might have gone up, but they're still a lot lower than they've ever been. Right. I mean, is, is that really showing empathy for people who are going through a tough time right now? Or should we be trying to structure our messages in a better way? Right. Because that that talks about that basically is about me. Right. As an agent saying, hey, you shouldn't worry about the rates. It's no big deal. They've been higher before. Just go ahead and buy that house anyway, uh, rather than sharing the message that says, hey, look, I get it. It's scary to see the rates go up, right? They're basically, in some cases, almost double what they were just a few months ago. That might really start to feel like you can't afford to buy the house you wanted to. But let's walk through some examples. Let's talk about why you might still be able to make this work and why that's the right move at this point in time, right? Can you see the difference there? It probably also helps that this is a video, right? I'm able to, to share the emotion of that. I'm able to, to empathize. I'm able to say, look, I get it and make the right faces and make the right tone of voice that show that I do actually get it, right? That I've been in those shoes before, that I'm there to be that trusted guide during a period of uncertainty, right? So keep that in mind. We're not in the, the, the blowout super growth uh, phase at this point. We are in the, hey, button down the hatches, save money. And if you can lean into that and you can show empathy around those ideas, you are going to clean up, all right? You are going to get a lot of attention here. All right, so here's what we want to do. We want to position ourselves as experts who give people a sense of calm or certainty while things are uncertain, all right? Now, again, this is where video is so freaking powerful, all right? When things are uncertain, when we don't know what's going to happen, when you can see somebody on video say, hey, I'm going to give you some ideas of where things are going, but I'll be honest, I don't know for sure either, right? That is honest. That, that's the kind of thing that's going to lead to a bond with that person. You're going to form that parasocial relationship. They're going to start to really appreciate that degree of honesty. And that is something you can do through video in a way you simply cannot through other forms of communication. So if you're out there saying to yourself, well, I've got a great blog post or I've, I've got something I wrote up on Facebook of, you know, back during the last recession that'll be perfect for this. That's awesome. Just use video, right? Just turn it into a video as opposed to just a text post and you'll get a lot more positive responses on it, right? So that's the first thing. You gotta really understand that when you put video content of all things in front of somebody, when they are feeling uncertain, 
you're going to have that impact that that you're going to be that authentic person that they want to build that relationship with just remember they're going to want to continue to see that from you you cannot back off of it right if you make this transition a video it does need to become a regular consistent part of how you communicate with people because they prefer it they're going to want to see more of it all right and then what you need to kind of focus on here is really you got to focus on pain points and solutions right this is always true, but what I will say is during a recession or when period people are feeling like there's a recession, you got to focus on those pains, right? You got to be honest. You got to admit that you're, you know, maybe going through some similar things that they are like, I'll, I'll be shocked, right? But agents always want to post and talk about all the sales they're getting. I want to see the agents that says, I'll be honest, my business is down 10% this year and it's been a little bit scary and frustrating, but that's why I can understand what a lot of you are also going through because you might be feeling some of the same senses of uncertainty that I am. And I would love to help you work through that, right? I haven't seen it yet, right? But I know the market is down. I know there's less houses being sold, not a single agent posting about how this year compares to last because it's not positive, but and I'm not saying you have to do that. I mean, that's just sort of a random thought. But when we are vulnerable ourselves and we share our pain points with our audience, they love us, right? They're going to appreciate that vulnerability. And that is a huge, huge deal to them, right? So when you're in a busy season, when things are going well, we tend to talk about interests. We tend to talk about things that are that are positive, that are exciting. When we're in a recession, we're going to switch a little bit more to the pain points, right? What are those people experiencing uh, that, that we can help them with here? Um, so Tanya is asking what video recipe should we be focusing on in this market? So, uh, for those of you not, so just to be clear, not everybody here is a current student with business video school, uh, Tanya, but I will answer that for you. So the, I don't, I don't have all the topics memorized off the top of my head. Um, but the ones that I would focus on inside the library, and we're actually gonna be making some video recipes that, that sort of address this a little bit more, uh, directly. Oh, you don't have to apologize. Just, just so you know that there's some people here just so we can tell them what a video recipe is real quick. Um, but what I do want to say is uh, anything that talks about where to save money is going to be a good one. Anything that's a DIY home improvement project, you know, things you can do on your own house. Uh, those are going to be recipes that work really, really well because that feeds right into where we're at right now. So if you don't, if you're not a current student, a video recipe is a script for a video, an example video we shoot ourselves that you can literally imitate. Um, it's all the instructions on how to make the video. It's any of the graphics, music, or uh, any sort of assets that you need to put it together. And then it's also the social media post or slash email body pre-written for you. So you know what to say when you share the video. So uh, if you are curious about how you can get access to those, uh, we can talk about that here at the end. But yeah, that's, that's a great question, Tanya, because I do think uh, leaning into those opportunities is, is really going to be huge here. If I have time at the end, I will see if I can jump over to the library and do a little screen share. And I might be able to talk through uh, some of the ones that make the most sense here. Uh, Mike, yeah, we are recording this and I will make sure to share that with everybody uh, when we're finished. All right, cool. Moving on. Thank you for the questions as, as we're going here. I do appreciate it. So what kinds of videos can you make here, right? What should we talk about? Well, here's a few. I'm just going to kind of run through these real quick, right? Four ways you can save more now for a down payment later, right? What is that title doing? It's acknowledging that some people uh, might feel like they have to put off buying their house a little bit. Guess what? The agent that empathizes with them and helps them along that path is going to be the one they use. By the way, this person might go through this. They might watch this video. Then they hit your database. They start seeing your other stuff. All of a sudden, they're scheduling a meeting with you to talk about how to, how to save that money. And then you realize, oh, turns out you don't actually need 20% you're qualified for this, blah, 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 right? And then all of a sudden they're they're buying a house with you. Downsize to save money and hassle. Again, people are gonna be thinking about downsizing. and that happens during any recession. Local happy hour deals that'll save you money, right? So again, if you're talking to first time home buyers, that's a great topic, right? If you're talking to people that are selling a, a several million dollar house, yeah, are they going to that many happy hours? Maybe not, right? So again, you always wanna remember who your target audience is and speak to them. Even if we are in a recession, we still wanna make sure we're talking to the right people. 10 ways to reduce your housing expenses, whether you rent or own, uh, interview with a hiring expert, what you, what can, uh, what you can do to get hired in a tough job market, and then it's okay to wait to move. So some of that script might look like, you know, you might've been ready to move, uh, but now you're not sure anymore. But let me walk you through how to make that decision, feel confident about staying where you are or moving, right? So again, empathy, we're, we're acknowledging the situation uh, and we're talking to those people honestly, right? 
Okay, so let's talk about a few different ways that you can use video, right? How are you gonna get these videos to the right people? Um, and then if we have some time at the end, there's a little bit about the school I wanna share with you, um, as well as, like I said, I can maybe uh, show those video recipes as well. So three of the main ones, these are these are three sort of primary ones that we focus on are one-to-one -one video messages, email marketing, and paid ad funnels, right? Now I'm gonna go over those three with you today. There are other things you could do though. We just don't have time to cover all of them, right? Social media, obviously. I mean, that's one that gets talked about so much that I don't know that we need to discuss it right now, uh, but you know what to do there. Print marketing via QR code. So if you're one of those people that is doing farming or you do some sort of print advertising, incorporate video into your print. This is one of the things I'm most excited about uh, out there is the fact that QR codes finally got fully accepted, right? Now the average person knows how to scan a QR code because they had to go to a, a, a restaurant at some point and scan the menu or whatever it might've been, right? But now the average person seems to understand how they work and can use them. And guess what? That makes sharing videos through print media way easier, right? Which is actually really kind of cool and exciting. Um, get them on your website. It shocks me how many agents are even making video, but just don't have this stuff on their website. So anytime somebody's looking into you, checking you out, however they got there, you want them to be able to get to know you better, right? So put that content there. And then obviously webinars like this, right? So those are some other ideas. Um, we're going to talk about those threes that, that have stars next to them to give you some more specifics today. Um, but remember, video is a form of communication. You can use it all over the place. There are really no limitations. Um, you just got to make sure you make that transition to start talking to people that way, right? So the first one was video messages. So let's expand on that just a little bit here. Video messages, right? This is a quick video, generally to a person you know. It's usually sent to just one person at a time. And my favorite example of this, um, let me make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. Yeah, I'll come back to it because I have all my examples on the next slide. Um, I don't want to you know, spoil the surprise there. So I'll tell you my favorite example in just a second. But one of the really cool things that this does is it's very meaningful. When you send a video message to a single person, you take the time to be addressing just them. I mean, they love it. I mean, it blows them away. And most people, they have no expectation for how you look or sound in these messages, right? Because everybody knows how intimidating it is to communicate through video now, right? Now, two and a half years ago, they didn't. But now we all had to get on Zoom meetings. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I've met a single person who has not been on a lot of Zoom meetings over the past two and a half years, right? So everybody gets it now. So when you send somebody a video message, they are not judging you, right? They're judging themselves. They're thinking, oh man, I don't know that I have the guts to record a video of myself. What a meaningful message this is, right? And it's crazy. I, I can send somebody a 10 second video message and it just has so much more impact and effect than if I send them a, a voicemail or if I even called them and talked to them for a few minutes, right? Just because it's not only a better form of communication, but they also understand how meaningful it is, how much effort you probably put into that. And therefore they tend not to think about how you look or sound, right? So there's no pressure. It's an incredible way to stay top of mind. Um, it's a great way to convert leads. It's a great way to answer client questions, resolve issues. Again, you can share more emotion through video, right? So if anything's ever stressful, use video. It's gonna be a much easier way to get those things resolved. 99% of email users uh, check their email. I think we have a typo in there. Uh, it should say either users or people, I guess. Uh, yeah, email daily, right? So up to 20 times every single day. People are looking at their email. So send them email videos where you can. And like I said, this is a great way to practice. This is one of my favorite reasons to start here. So if you've not done any video yet, start with video messages. This is a huge thing we focus on in the school. We always encourage our students to start out with video messages and you're gonna get comfortable on camera very quickly. It's a lot of practice with a very low pressure environment and you're gonna get there much, much quicker as a result. So let's talk about those kinds of video messages. My favorite version is the happy birthday video message. Very easy, very low pressure. It's always positively received because it's their freaking birthday. Who doesn't like to hear happy birthday on their birthday, right? Um, and there's just there's just nothing to get wrong here, right? I mean, you can't mess it up as long as you say happy birthday, right? Or as long as you don't promote yourself during the message. So don't say, hey, happy birthday, by the way, if you want to buy or sell a house, call me up. I mean, don't do that. As long as you don't do that, you're in good shape, right? 
Um, you can do check-in messages. Really, anything's an excuse to send a video message, right? You can answer questions via video, give a client transaction update, remind people about stuff, explain a contract, right? I mean, think about how many times you've had people ask you questions about specific details on, on paperwork or something like that. With a video, you can show them, right? I can show them this way, record the, the actual uh, paper. I could put it up on my screen and do a screen recording. So many ways to do it, right? And then I do think lead conversion, this is a big one, right? And you're going to see this work even better during the recession because you're probably going to get less leads. And those leads are going to be more, there's going to be more competition. They're going to have signed up on more websites. They're going to be waiting longer uh, than they would during a, a boom time, right? And so when we put videos of ourselves in front of those people, they're going to see us as distinctly different and better than our competitors. And we are going to convert more of them, all right? So lots of different ways to utilize video. And you can see, all these examples from some of our students that have used video messages specifically to attract business. It is very highly effective. So uh, let me answer some questions here. All right. Um, I support a few agents. Do you believe the videos should be coming from myself or from the agents themselves? Well, the videos should, here, let me put it this way. You can have videos come from anybody you want, right? Anybody that the, the client is going to interact with, it's a great idea to put some videos of that person in front of that client, right? Um, it is very important that the agent that they work with is in at least some of the videos, right? Even if they're pre-recorded and you're going to help facilitate by sending those, those messages out for them, that's fine. Um, but the video, I mean, th this is, let's think of it this way. There's a part of your brain that recognizes human faces, right? This is our logo. This is what people remember. It's actually easier for us to remember faces than freaking names, right? So if I don't see the face of the person, I'm not building the relationship with them, right? So you got to remember that part. Um, it's the, the relationship is going to form between whoever's in the video and whoever's watching it, right? So keep that in mind. That being said, I think using video wherever you can, as often as you can, as much as you can, um, is a great idea. And if that means multiple people are showing up in front of them, that's just fine, right? All right, good questions. I sent a very silly happy birthday video message to a friend slash potential client. Uh, use the crazy filters to make my face a little funny. Try not to take it too seriously. My friend shared it with her family. They all loved it. I, that's awesome. I, so Genevieve, nice work there. That's that's a great example, great story um, of, of how this stuff works, right? And the reality is we, we focus too much on ROI, right? So we send a single message and we go, well, they didn't reply immediately and hire me. It didn't work, right? But that's not true. If we focus on it as a relationship building tool, think about that, right? Not only is that an example of you furthering the relationship with that person, but then they went and showed it to their family and friends, right? Now their family and friends have all seen you. They've seen you in a very positive environment, a very positive light, and they're that much more likely to want to work with you, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if six months or a year, a couple of years from now, you get a message from that person and say, hey, is it okay if I introduce my, my daughter or my friend or whoever it was? Um, because you know they remembered you from that message years ago. That's that's the kind of stuff you end up seeing happening. But thank you for sharing that. It's a great story. So um, just one quick reminder, you don't need paid equipment or, or stuff to do this, right? Facebook Messenger, you literally open up a conversation with somebody, you click the camera, you hold the record button down, boom, you're done, right? So, so freaking simple in terms of how you do it. All right, a couple other ideas for you. So email marketing. This one is, again, mostly free. You can spend money if you want to, but you can do it for free. Um, here's my favorite thing about email versus social media. I control my audience, right? Social media, they control your audience. That platform controls your audience. If I have your email or your phone number or your address, I can contact you without there having to be an intermediary, right? So there's not some other platform that I'm completely dependent on for you to get that message. So because people are checking their email all the freaking time, we wanna make sure that we're staying in front of them, right? So we wanna continue to hit them with this stuff. So now does this feel and look a little bit similar to what I just said with the video messaging? Yes, right? Because we're using some of the same tools to communicate with them. The idea here there, uh, the idea with this one is to communicate with your full audience every time, right? So this is the, the difference between a message and email marketing is that I'm making a video that's going to be seen by at least an, an entire segment of my email list, if not the whole email list, right? Um, I'll tell you right now, I, I interviewed one of our students the other day. And uh, it was interesting. He's talking about how 
over all the years, his his goal has always really been to build his database. And he's got 3,800 people in his database at this point. And he actually segments his database for his video. So he'll come up with a video, for instance, about, you know, things uh, that, that, you know, may, maybe one he would make here in the next few months would be like, you know, three affordable family activities you can do with young kids, right? But then he only sends that email and that message out to the 300 families in his database that he knows have young kids, right? So his email rate's amazing, the click-through rate's amazing, all the signals are, are sort of dialed in just right, and he gets tremendous responses from that, right? So that's what's so cool about email is I know that if I send an email out, there are issues that can happen, but almost every single person, if not every single one of them is going to have that email in their inbox. And it's going to be up to them if they want to click on it, open and watch it, not some social media platform, right? So that's why a lot of what I encourage, you know, our students and everybody in general to think about is how can I get email addresses and not worry as much about getting followers, right? Um, and then here's a couple examples of just promo emails you can put out there. You can insert videos into Reality is you don't need to overcomplicate this. You just need to do it consistently. And so what's really cool is that this is an example from Jeff, one of our partners here in the school that I really like. And that is that Jeff makes it very easy at any given time to have a conversation with him, to book an appointment, to, to take things to the next level so that he doesn't have to always be telling people that, right? He doesn't have to send emails that constantly hammer people. Hey, reach out. Let me know if you want to get scheduled for an appointment. They do it themselves at any moment, right? And then finally, the third idea I have for you here, and I do wanna make sure uh, we come back to a couple other things at the end, is paid video ads. We could talk about this for forever, right? In fact, we have a whole course about how to do this inside of the school, and we're gonna be offering some classes on it live here as well pretty soon. Um, in fact, I think tomorrow we're doing a, a, a one hour uh, training on Facebook video ads inside the school. So uh, if you are a current student with us, make sure you RSVP for that. Um, but what I want you to think about here is that targeted advertising, especially with video, um, is is such a huge opportunity and it's it's so underutilized, you know? And again, I think it's because most agents, you know, they think, well, if I'm not getting leads immediately, I don't want to do it. And I get that. Um, but that's not how big companies think, right? Big companies, they think, how do I get the largest amount of market share? And these will be more affordable, right? These are going to be more affordable during a recessionary period. So what you want to think about here is how can I use paid ads to target the right people with the right message, right? Now you can target um, differently on different platforms. So Facebook, you are going to be limited to a 15 mile radius, right? You don't necessarily have that limitation on YouTube. Um, but because we are in the real estate space, there are going to be rules that we have to follow on both of these platforms, right? Um, but the point is what I can do here, and this, this is really the key, is I can number one, target within reason, the people that I want to attract, right? So the people that have the same kinds of problems, the same kinds of interests, uh, that I have too, that I want to work with, right? I can target those people in the first place. I can also target my own existing database. So if I'm sending stuff out through email, I can also run it as an ad on one of these platforms and make sure that those people in my database are guaranteed to have a chance to see it, right? That can be a really powerful way to do this stuff. So that's one aspect. But the other one is I can just do targeting straight up however I want to. Then, and here's the key, I can retarget those people. I can consistently stay in front of the people who watched my earlier videos. That is how you build relationships, right? So while these ads are affordable, what I'm going to be doing, at least in our business, I'm going to be getting in front of as many people as I can with an initial ad. And then I'm going to be making sure those same people using all the targeting features you have here continue to see other content from me if they watched it, right? So here's what's really cool. I can I can create an original audience of 500,000 people all across my town that have certain interests, certain you know uh, qualifiers. I can show them videos of myself and then I can say, hey, if they watch at least half of that video, that means I got their attention, whatever it is. Maybe they like me, maybe they like the message, doesn't matter because I know I got their attention. I wanna continue to show that person more videos. You can do that on either of these platforms and that, is what's going to be really powerful here, right? Because what I can do is get in front of more people than I ever have before, stay in front of the ones that are most interested. And then during the recession, they're going to hire me when they need me. But maybe even more importantly, or the bigger opportunity here is when the recession ends, things open back up and the economy picks back up again, I'm going to have a market share that dwarfs 
the market share I had at the beginning, right? And I will have been able to do that more affordably than I could at any other time. So that's the thing to really understand here and take advantage of, right? So lots and lots and lots of huge, but very different opportunities when it comes to video, right?